Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, today's project, since it's all rainy and nasty outside, I'm stuck in the house anyway, is uh, my conversion of the old uh, uh, Kenwood repeater power supply into a benchtop supply. So here is the power supply and uh, what I've done so far is uh, the metal chassis from the repeater I've cut I've cut pieces of it away with my angle cutter angle grinder so that this is a nice uh, little self-contained uh, rectangle now. I'm going to have to make a lid for the top, but uh, this is going to I think work out pretty well. It'll just sit back on the back of my bench. Uh, got a fairly standard connector for the output here that I can rig a few patch cords for for different types of radios. And uh, I've uh, mounted the uh, power switch right there. And this, this hole that was here was already uh, convenient. Uh, I just had to notch it a little bit so the screws could sit in there and, and lock the switch in place. So I've got a push switch for it. It's got plenty of holes for ventilation, <laughs> top and bottom. Yeah, plenty of, uh, of ventilation on the case. What I was curious about was the uh, current capacity of the power supply. Uh, the service manual for the repeater does not say what it can supply DC amperage wise. Um, it does say to adjust its voltage with a 10 amp uh, draw from, into a dummy load. Uh, so the nominal operating current is probably at least 10 amps. Um, maybe peaks a little higher. Uh, what I was trying to figure out uh, for clues was I was looking at uh, the bridge rectifier that's in here and uh, the output transistors which are under this little metal cap here. Now the output transistors are 2N5885s and looking at the data sheet for that particular transistor I see that it's uh, rated uh, high, end, high current um, is 25 amps per transistor and there's two of them in parallel so um, the limitation is not the output transistors uh, two of those in parallel uh, 25 amps each uh, that's 50 amps total uh, maximum current so <laughs> those could handle a 20 amp draw um, the uh, bridge rectifier uh, I can't see the top of it I can see the size of it uh, it's quite large what I've seen in other supplies so it can probably handle 20 amps um, based on what I've seen with other power supplies. I think the limiting factor is going to be the uh, power transformer and what it can supply. So I'm just making an educated guess that uh, this will probably be able to supply a steady 10 amps and a peak around 15 or maybe a little higher. Um, it might work okay for uh, working on HF radios if I don't expect to, to key down CW at 100 watts. Um, I could probably use this supply um, for working on HF rigs, which is better than what I've got on the bench right now, uh, which is nothing. Um, <laughs> I've got a little B&K Precision 5 amp lab supply, um, and I've got a 12 amp hour, 12.4 amp hour battery under the bench that I've been hooking uh, my HF radios into, uh, but that drops down to like 11.9 volts under load, you know. So this will give me a nice regulated 13 volts um, at... Uh, 10 amps nominal, probably peaking around 15 or so. And uh, I'm kind of guessing at that also based on the fuse. The AC side has a 3 amp uh, slow blow fuse. Uh, so uh, wattage is uh, current times voltage. So 3 amps at 120 volts is uh, 470, 480, somewhere around there, watts, I think. Uh, and then you subtract the efficiency of the power supply you know and even if the efficiency of the regulated section is uh, is 40 percent that still is more than 100 watts um, draw on the output before that fuse would blow so uh, I think that uh, this will work out okay as a, as a bench supply for my needs so I need to make a lid for this big open top here adjust the voltage and then uh, my bench supply will be done I'll just tuck it back at the back of the bench 
So what am I going to do for a lid? Well, the uh, case from the repeater is uh, nice sheet steel. It's uh, long enough and it's got these luber vents in it right here. So I'm going to measure and cut that metal out to make, a, make my lid to fit over the top. I uh, have to drill a few screw holes uh, to screw it down, but uh, that's what I'm going to make my lid. So that's what I'm doing next. I'm going to get uh, the ruler out and make some measurements, mark it up, and then get the uh, big old angle grinder out and, uh, and cut the metal and uh, make my, uh, my lid for the power supply. There we go. There's a lid for our power supply. Worked just fine. I just need to clean up the edges. Well, there we go. We got a lid on the top of the power supply. So now it's completely enclosed. And I can tuck it over there on the side of the bench to use it and just uh, switch it on as needed. I think the only thing I have left to do, uh, it needs a power light. I need an LED probably over here near the power switch um, so I can see that the power supply is on and, and won't forget to shut it off when I'm done using it. So I think I'm going to do that. Let's rig up a little LED, wire it over here to the filter capacitor that you saw in there. And uh, power supply will be done. I'll just tuck it back against the back of the bench and uh, be ready to uh, work on radios with it. So let's make a power light. Well, there it is. Tucked back there behind the uh, solder station on the bench. I've got the power light wired in. Might be able to see it from here. A couple of fans are hooked up to it. Let's turn it on. Eh, I think you can sort of see that power light. Let me give you a closer shot. There you go. A little LED. 470 ohm resistor, so it's throwing about 29 milliamps. That gives it enough light to be seen. And we're just running a couple of fans with the test cable I put together here. So there you are. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.